the case, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. This is case number IT0367, the prosecutor versus voice of special. Thank you. And the appearances, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. For the prosecution, trial attorney Daniel Saxon, case manager Kimberly Fleming, and my name is Hildegard Ötzretzlaff. Thank you. On the side of the defense, I can see no defense counsel. I have decided to defend myself. I give you the floor immediately. I just was announcing that only a few minutes ago I received your letter translated into English informing us that you decided to defend yourself in the proceedings which, as you, as you state, we are preparing for you. You continue stating, quote, I insist that you submit all court documents and prosecution material to me personally and exclusively in the Serbian language. We received this. We have to come back to the question of defense counsel later. You, Dr. Sheshel, have decided yourself to come voluntarily to The Hague from Belgrade in order to rebut the allegations raised against you. These allegations are contained in the indictment dated the 15th day of January 2003, reviewed and confirmed by another judge of this tribunal the 14th of February 2003. Dr. Sechel, um, the basis for the fact that after your arrival in The Hague, you were arrested at the same time, the same day, that was Monday, the 24th of February 2003, you were brought to the United Nations Detention Unit. The underlying reason for this and the legal basis for this is an arrest warrant dated the 14th of February 2003, issued by a permanent judge of this tribunal. The president of this tribunal has assigned only yesterday this case to trial chamber 2. I'm presiding over. In this capacity, Dr. Sheshel, I would like to ask you several questions. The first questions are only for the purposes of the identification, having nothing to do with the case as such, especially not with the charges. Would you please be so kind and state your full name, including all first names and last names for the record? Vojislav Sheshel. Vojislav Sheshel. Thank you. And your father's and mother's name, please. Nikola and Danica. Nikola and Danica. What is the date and place of your birth? 11th of October 1954 in Sarajevo. What was your professional occupation before you came to the Netherlands? Yes, I'm Dr. Danik now. I am a doctor of law. I'm a full professor at the Faculty of Law, and I was a, remem a member of the Republican Parliament and the Federal Parliament as well. Thank you. And your last place of resident, including the exact address? Belgrade, Bata. Belgrade, Batajnica. Posavskog odreda, number 36. And finally, are you married and do you have children? Yes, I am married and I have four sons. 
Thank you, Dr. Sheshel. The proceedings today are your initial appearance before this tribunal under Rule 62 of our Rules of Procedure and Evidence. It seems to be a formality only, but you, as a lawyer, know that it's very important, a very important point in time, setting to a certain extent the cause for the entire procedure. The underlying reasons for this procedure is the following. The prosecution has asked a judge of this tribunal to confirm an indictment against you on a prima facie basis in your absence. At the same time, there was a request for an arrest warrant on the basis for your deprivation of liberty. Normally, the other party, in this case you, Dr. Sheshel, would have a right to inform and heard before a decision is taken. However, it is for the nature of an arrest warrant that this is not possible to hear a wanted person beforehand. Today, you will have the possibility to contest both the indictment and the deprivation of liberty. For a better understanding of what's going on, let me give you the following informations before reading the indictment. Dr. Sheshel, it's your right to remain silent. As it is enshrined in Article 14, Ara 3, G of the United Nations Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. No inference to your disadvantage can be drawn if you remain totally silent. The only inference can be drawn that can be found in Rule 62, Para Roman 4 of our Rules of Procedure and Evidence, where you can read that if the accused fails to enter a plea in the initial or any further appearance, the judge shall enter a plea of not guilty on the accused behalf. But I have to warn you at the same time, everything you may say in courtroom may be used even against you in evidence. It is only fair to inform you about the other side of the same coin. It's a general rule in all courtrooms in this world that any kind of substantial cooperation would be for your advantage. In case it will not come to a sentencing stage, your cooperation will be in your own interest to speed up proceedings. In case, and I have to emphasize only in case, it would come to a sentencing stage, such kind of substantial cooperation will always be held in your favor. So, Shashel, uh, uh, did you understand this first part of the admonition? I understood it. Thank you. Let's now come to the second part. Rule 45 of our Rules of Procedure and Evidence provides in para A and G the following. <coughs> A. Whenever the interest of justice so demand, counsel shall be assigned to the suspect or accused who lacks the means to remunerate such counsel. And in G, you can read a suspect or an accused electing to conduct his or her own defense shall so notify the registrar in writing at the first opportunity. Apparently, you have chosen the latter option. I have nevertheless to emphasize in conclusion that you are always entitled to such a counsel assigned to you. 
because no doubt it will facilitate your defense, especially related to the extremely difficult legal questions, even though you are acquainted with the law, you know the law, but as you may know, we have to um, obey the rules of a hybrid set of rules, procedure and evidence, predominantly coming from the common law system and uh, coming from a civil law system sometimes have to face additional problems with his legal questions. No doubt, um, when it comes to the facts, it's for you and I have not the slightest doubt that you are eloquent enough and have the rhetorical capacities to express what you want related to the facts. But related to the law, it could be in your advantage, in fact, to have a defense counsel. May I ask you whether there is any intention maybe to reverse your decision or do you want additional time for your final decision whether or not you want to have the assistance. I emphasize the assistance. It's not an either or. The assistance of a defense counsel. My decision to defend myself is a definite one. It is possible that I will engage an assistant and a legal advisor who will never appear on my behalf in this courtroom. They will never appear in this courtroom. I retain this exclusivity of appearing in the courtroom on the side of the accused. However, there is no need for me to engage a legal advisor or a legal assistant at any early date. Now it is up to the prosecution to act, and in the meantime, I will have sufficient time to see whether I do need assistance. Thank you. As to the fact that in the moment, apparently, in the absence of a defense counsel, it might be different, uh, difficult for you to act at all. Are you in the possession of the rules of procedure and evidence dated the 12th of December 2002? Yes, I received that. I received all the relevant legal documents except for the text of Resolution 827 dated the 25th of May 1993 and the text of Revolu Resolution 995 dated the 8th of November 1994, that is to say the Security Council resolutions. And I request that this be handed over to me as well so that my documentation would be complete. No doubt you will receive these requested documents as soon as possible. Unfortunately, opposed to the rules of procedure and evidence, I would have um, before me also in BCS, it's only in English, but you have the right to have these um, requested documents in a language you understand. Let us now hear the charges of the indictment of January 15 without the um, attachment. May I ask Madame Registrant, please? Uh, I insist, I insist that the indictment be read in its entirety in accordance with Rule 62. No doubt you are entitled to do so. We then will read the indictment in full with all the annexes. <coughs> Any observations by the prosecution? No, Your Honor.
Let us please start with the the first part and Annex 1. And before we starting with Annex 2, I want to ask the prosecution whether there is any problem when we read out the names of the alleged victims in this case. But let's come to this later. May I ask Madame Registrar to start reading out slowly, please? Yes, Your Honor. The prosecutor of the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, pursuant to her authority under Article 18 of the Statute of the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, charges Boislav Sheshel with crimes against humanity and violations of the laws of customs of war, as set for below. Accused Vojislav Sheshel, son of Nikola Sheshel, was born on 11 October 1954 in Sarajevo, Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. He is a graduate of the Faculty of Law of Sarajevo University. He holds a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and a doctorate obtained in 1976, 1978, and 1979, respectively. From 1981 to 1984, he worked as an assistant professor lecturing on political science at Sarajevo University. Although he was originally a communist, Vojislav Sheshel eventually became critical of the communist regime in the former Yugoslavia, and in the early 1980s, he developed close relations with the group of Serbian nationalists. In 1984, he was convicted of counter-revolutionary activities and sentenced to eight years of imprisonment. On the commutation of the sentence by the Supreme Court of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, the SFRY, he was released in 1986. After his release, Vojislav Sheshel settled down in Belgrade and continued to engage in nationalistic politics. In 1989, he traveled to the USA and met the chairman of the movement of Chetniks in the free world, Momchilo Jujic, who on the day of the 600th anniversary of the Battle of Kosovo, the 28th June 1989, appointed him a Chetnik Vojvoda, meaning a duke or leader. Following this appointment, Vojislav Sheshel traveled to the USA, Canada, Australia, and Western Europe, collecting funds to support his nationalistic activities. On the 23rd January 1990, Vojislav Sheshel became the leader of the Serbian Freedom Movement, and on 14 March 1990 formed an alliance with Vuk Drashkovic, another Serbian nationalist, and started the Serbian Renewal Movement, the SPO. In June 1990, Vojislav Sheshel founded the Serbian National Renewal Party, subsequently renamed the Serbian Chetnik Movement. In the elections of December 1990, his party received almost 100,000 votes. Shortly thereafter, the authorities of the SFRY banned the Serbian Chetnik Movement. On 23 February 1991, Vojislav Sheshel was appointed president of the newly founded Serbian Radical Party, the SRS. In June 1991, he was elected a member of the Assembly of the Republic of Serbia. In almost daily rallies and election campaigns, he called for Serb unity and war against Serbia's historic enemies, namely the ethnic Croat, Muslim, and Albanian populations within the territories of the former Yugoslavia. Additional relevant historical and political facts are set out in Annex 1 to this indictment. Individual criminal responsibility. Article 7.1 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Vojislav Sheshel is individually criminally responsible for the crimes referred to in Article 3 and 5 of the Statute of the Tribunal and described in this indictment, which he planned, ordered, instigated, committed, or in whose planning, preparation, or execution he otherwise aided and abetted. By using the word committed in this indictment, the prosecutor does not intend to suggest that the accused physically committed all of the crimes charged personally. Committed, as used in this indictment, includes the participation of Vojislav Sheshel in a joint criminal enterprise. By using the word instigated, the prosecutor charges that the accused Vojislav Sheshel's speeches, communications, acts, and or omissions contributed to the perpetrator's decision to commit the crimes alleged. Vojislav Sheshel participated in a joint criminal enterprise. The purpose of this joint criminal enterprise was the per permanent forcible removal through the commission of crimes in violation of Article 3 and 5 of the Statute of the Tribunal of a majority of the Croat, Muslim, and other non-Serb populations from approximately one-third of the territory of the Republic of Croatia and large parts of 
Bosnia and Herzegovina. And parts, and from parts of Vojvodina, the Republic of Serbia, in order to make these areas part of a new Serb-dominated state. With respect to Croatia, the area included those regions that were referred to by Serb authorities as the SAO Krajina, i.e. the Serb Autonomous Region of Krajina. The SAO Western Slavonia and SAO Slavonia, Baranja, and Western Srem after 10 December 1991 and the SAO Krajina became known as the RSK, the Republika of Serbia and Krajina. On 26 February 1992, the SAO Western Slavonia and SAO Slavonia, Baranja, and Western Srem joined the RSK as well as the Dubrovnik Republic. With respect to Bosnia and Herzegovina, the areas included Bosanski Shamats and Zvornik. The crimes enumerated in this indictment were within the object of the joint criminal enterprise, and Vojislav Sheshel had the knowledge and intention necessary for the commission of each of the crimes. Alternatively, the crimes enumerated in counts 1 to 9 and 12 to 15 of the indictment were the natural and foreseeable consequences of the execution of the object of the joint criminal enterprise, and Vojislav Sheshel was aware that such crimes were the possible outcome of the execution of the joint criminal enterprise. The aforesaid joint criminal enterprise came into existence before 1st of August 1991 and continued until at least until December 1995. Vojislav Sheshel participated in the joint criminal enterprise until September 1993 when he had a conflict with Slobodan Milosevic. Vojislav Sheshel worked in concert with several individuals in the joint criminal enterprise to succeed in its objective. Each participant or co-perpetrator within the joint criminal enterprise played his or her role or roles that significantly contributed to the ob objective of the enterprise. Other individuals participating in this joint criminal enterprise included Slobodan Milosevic, De General Velko Kadilovic, General Blago Adzic, General Ratko Mladic, Jovica Stanisic, Franko Simat Simatovic, also known as Frankie, Radovan Stojicic, also known as Bacha, Milan Martic, Goran Hacic, Radovan Karadic, Mamchilo Krajishnik, Biljana Plavšic, Zelko Rashnatovic, also known as Arkan, and other members of the Yugoslav People's Army, the JNA, later the Yugoslav Army, the VJ, the newly formed Serb Territorial Defense, the TO, of Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Army of the Republika Srpska Krajina, SVK, and the Army of Republika Srpska, and the TOs of Serbia and of Montenegro, local Serb, Republic of Serbia and Republika Srpska Police Forces, the MUP Forces, including the State Security, the DB, branch of the Ministry of Interior of the Republika, the Republic of Serbia, and Serb Special Police Forces of the SAO Krajina and the RSK, commonly referred to as Martic's Police, Marticevci, the SAO Krajina Police when members of the Serbian, Montenegrin, Bosnian, and Croatian Serb paramilitary forces and volunteer units, including Chetniks or Shesho Yevsi, translated into English as Shesho's men, collectively Serb forces and other political figures from the SFRY, the Republic of Serbia, the Republic of Montenegro, and the Bosnian and Croatian Serb leadership. Vojislav Sheshel, as president of the SRS, was a prominent political figure in the SFRY, the FRY, in the time period relevant to this indictment. He propagated a policy of uniting all Serbian lands in a homogeneous Serbian state. He defined the, so the so-called Karlovac Ogulin, Karlovac's Virovitica line as the western border of this new Serbian state, which he called Greater Serbia which included Serbia, Montenegro, Macedonia, and considerable parts of Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. 
Vojsav Shesho acting alone and in concert with other members of the joint criminal enterprise participated in the joint, inter- joint criminal enterprise in the following ways. A. He participated in the recruitment, formation, financing, supply, support, and direction of Serbian volunteers connected to the SRS, commonly known as Chetniks or Šešovjevci. These volunteer units were created and supported to assist in the execution of the joint criminal enterprise through the Commission of Crimes in Violation of Articles 3 and 5 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Made inflam- B. He made inflammatory speeches in the media, during public events, and during visits to the volunteer units and other Serb forces in Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, instigating those forces to commit crimes in violation of Article 3, Articles 3 and 5 of the Statute of the Tribunal. C. He espoused and encouraged the creation of a homogeneous Greater Serbia, encompassing the territory specified in the indictment by violence and thereby participated in war propaganda and incitement of hatred towards non-Serb people. D. In public speeches, he called for the expulsion of Croat civilians from parts of Vojvodina region in Serbia and thus instigated, instigated his followers and the local authorities to engage in a persecution campaign against the local Croat population. E. He participated in the planning and preparation of the takeover of villages in the two SAOs in Croatia and in the municipalities of Bosanski Šamac and Zvornik in Bosnia and Herzegovina and the subsequent forcible removal of the majority of the non-Serb population from these areas. E.F. He participated in the provision of financial, material, logistical, and political support necessary for such takeovers. He obtained this support with the help of Slobodan Milosevic from the Serbian authorities and from Serbs living abroad, where he collected funds to support the aim of, of the joint criminal enterprise. G. He recruited Serbian volunteers connected to the SRS and indoctrinated them with his extreme ethnic rhetoric so that they engaged in the forcible removal of the non-Serb population in the targeted territories through the commission of crimes as specified in this indictment with particular violence and brutality. Borislav Sheshel knowingly and willfully participated in the joint criminal enterprise sharing the intent of other participants in the joint criminal enterprise or being aware of the foreseeable consequences of their actions. On this basis, he bears individual criminal responsibility for the crimes under Article 7.1 of the Statute of the Tribunal, in addition to his responsibility under the same article for having planned, ordered, instigated, committed, or otherwise aided and embedded in the planning, preparation, and execution of those crimes.